It's 2011, and all your gear is sold last year. You gotta get in your car and hit the gas to Visalia MMA Gear or Visalia MMA Gear of Hanford. Get the new logo shirts for only $19.95 with any purchase. And with any purchase, Eddie's giving away Pride Fighting Championship DVDs. That's right. And don't forget, he's also got five titles from King of the Cage. Absolutely free with any purchase. And don't forget, Telemont sent ya. It's all or nothing. February 18th at Tachi Palace Fights in Lemoore. 11 scheduled MMA bouts. Champion Leopoldo Zorreo versus David Loasso. A co-main event features Jose De Silva and Ian McCall. A flyweight title fight with Ulysses Gomez and Daryl Montague. Plus local favorites Mike Marino, CJ Keith, and Lemoore's own Andrew Martinez. Tickets as low as $30. Order online at TachiPalace.com. It's all or nothing. Thursday, February 18th at the Tachi Palace Hotel and Casino Lemoore. What's up, everybody? It's Mods Cage Radio out here, Thrive Fitness. Uh, Madera, California. Yeah, Madera, California. Thrive Fitness, Thrive MMA, the home of Isaac De Jesus, and also where uh, one of our guests that has joined us tonight, Mr. Mike Moreno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mr. Welcome to the Mr. show. Mr. Nomad. Mr. Yeah, I, tra- yeah, I travel yeah. all over the world with a backpack. He does, dude. He's like he's like Kane and shit, dude. Hey, bro, Just it's my, my, I call it my bag of whoop ass. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right, we're live out here. Um, I guess we got some some sponsors. I guess you do. So let's uh, let's shout those out real quick. What the hell is this? this real? Is, this is real water. Okay. It's, uh, it's alkalized, antioxidant, stabilized, okay. negative ions for ultracellular hydration. Wow, it dude! It tastes yummy. It, 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 okay, it's, I'm, I'm gonna taste water, it. Bro. In in layman's terms, bro, it's supposed to be like negative high tech water, bro. It, it's supposed to be negatively charged to complete the the circuit in your body, basically. Like, I don't know if you by, by mess drinking with that drink or whatever, but it, it's you're gonna it's, get real it, pumped up. It right sounds now. kind of kind of kind of corny, but it's super easy to drink, dude. And, you know what I mean? It's it's great. I love it. It's like really smooth for some reason. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of addicting, I'm not going to lie. No, it's like really, it's, I don't know. How would you he, say he, it's, he has six cases of that in that backpack. I got, I got tons of my, <laughs> you know. Water in the plant. Dude, real water is real homies, good. Don't hate. The homies over at if real, you have not real had water, real water. Liquid nitro hooked it up. Yeah. Does that sound dumb that I said it's really smooth? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's damn good. I'm down for some real water. I, hey, I called you the time that I went up to Salinas, right? Yeah. And I said, I think Mike Moreno's here. And you were like, why? Yeah. I see a dude with a huge-ass backpack <laughs> walking around. And I said, That's nobody true. does that. That's nobody. right. I did see you out there. Yeah. That amateur so I, fight, right? That, yeah. So I text him. That was at uh, Central yeah. Coast Throwdown. Are you at this Are you at this fights over here? And he was like, where are you at? Shout out to Mike oh, McNeil. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, my girl got a pee. Oh, big shout out to my to my, to my my homies, uh, Master V, over in uh, Salinas at Kuktar Jiu-Jitsu, by the way. Kutar Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, Kutar Jiu Jitsu. That's yeah. uh, okay. that's where that's where I was. Uh, I never heard that. Originally one. got my, my my blue belt. My first. I was belted by Master V. Oh Vince sweet. Vanderlipe. So that's uh that's my Jiu Jitsu instructor out there in Salinas. Okay, yeah. right on. That gym probably had like twenty guys fighting that night, and I think they all won. I don't remember mm-hmm. any of those guys. Really? Either. Yeah. I that's think it was fifty fifty. That was my. Yeah. Th- thanks for pumping it up, though. I appreciate that. Good <laughs> that, looking out. That was Everyone my. you cornered one. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that was solid. <laughs> All right, we're out here, obviously, at uh, Thrive Fitness and MMA. They've got uh, a cage. We're actually sitting in a little mini cage and whatnot. They set us in here, so this is pretty cool. Got Isaac De Jesus out there uh, beating up little kids. Uh, not something I want to videotape and show. They're the all his size, about. dude. Little uh, kids. What that's do you mean? true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is a fair fight. <laughs> they, those kids looked like they were asking for it anyway. They were staring. They did make eye contact with Isaac. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So this looks like a pretty good, uh, a pretty good place to train. It's a lot bigger than you know some of the gyms that I've been in and whatnot. You've trained in some small gyms, I'm sure. I've trained in some holes in the wall. Yeah. Uh, back when I was like first started training with Buhawi, we were training out of this little meat locker. Yeah. That was literally like a hundred foot by a hundred foot. It's oh, like snap. super small, and we just did work there. So this is actually park. a luxury. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yes. Then there was a point where we didn't even have a. a stinking gym and we were just training at a park you know uh, what i mean 
Oh, wow. But so this is like luxury right here. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty good size. It used to be a basketball gym. I think they converted it. And Thrive's done a good job. Of uh, oh, that's true. Help, of yeah, if you look at the, the floor, I guess, that, uh, I guess that's true. But, yeah, uh, my boy has definitely uh, set it up in here. It looks like we got the moss cages uh, going on. looks like we got, uh, oh, look, Fallen Angel is uh, texting us. So uh, I hit him back for you. Yeah, do that. We're going to be on. Don't need to text me. Shout out to the Fallen Angel. That's the, what we're going to see tonight. What, what's going to win, the Fallen Angel or th or the 15 minutes we scheduled for? Him? I don't know, man. We who's, he fight, who's he fighting again? Gunderson. Gunderson. Oh, that'll be and a Gunderson, good one. Gunderson's yeah. going to come on with us. And, Almost as good and as uh, Moreno and Forbes. That's, a, that's no. a big fight. Moreno and Forbes is a big fight, too. Yeah. Yeah. Moreno. I think, I think that's going to be a good one. Moreno's I mean, been out of action so for quite a while. I'm pretty Mike excited Moreno to, to see you, bro. While, I've been quite. I've been wondering, like, what the hell happened and whatnot, bro. I thought we were dying behind the bar or whatnot. I'm like, uh, what the hell? Is he just going to beat up drunks or are you going to get him in the cage? I was hiding in um, my man cave. In <laughs> my <laughs> man cave. <laughs> yeah, give us a rundown on what really went down, though. Yeah, how, bro. How well, uh, long story short, well, well, since we have a little time. Yeah, we got all kinds of time, <laughs> bro. <laughs> well, anyhow... So, initially, the last time we talked was in Visalia, right, Mots? Yep. No, and no, no. At the no. firehouse? That, that was we in actually Hanford. Oh, that was Hanford. Hanford. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hanford. Yeah. When, when I was actually... Uh, when you were the old firehouse. The yeah. I was going to fight the uh, faux pal, co cow, co... Professor X. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Or whatever. Anyhow, um, I ended up going and doing the um, Ultimate Fighter tryouts. Uh, long story short, they called me back for like a second interview, so I was uh -huh. trying to get on that. I was pretty, my chances were pretty high, but right. I, they ended up finding a blood clot in my lower left cerebellum oh, shit. that I had to go and see a neurosurgeon about. Oh, the shit. part about it was is that I didn't have any health insurance, oh, snap. so I had to go through uh, Uncle Sam, you know what I mean? And that, that took literally forever, you know what I right. mean? I had to yeah. go do see multiple neurosurgeons you know what i mean every time i would go i'd get i'd get the run around they'd give me a different doctor every time i went and it was just it was just hectic finally we got fed mm. up with them we're like sat them down look we've had this many different doctors i've talked to this doctor and this doctor somebody help me the fuck out you know what right. i mean because this is bullshit i don't like the run around thing right. you know what i mean and um they finally uh had a little meeting there was six neurosurgeons at, at this meeting and, and they all were kind of discussing whether or not to, to do basically neurosurgery on me because where, where the clot was at, it's basically like 0 0.04th of a millimeter big, and it's like right on the lower left side of my back of my head. And the doctor said that if they were to go in and operate, that it might do more bad than good because it's, oh, and it's so deep and in just like a weird spot that it might not, it might not, that, that would probably be the worst decision to go wow. ahead and operate so i was like right then i was my heart sunk i was like what yeah, the, what no am doubt. i gonna do now right but then and then they go however the bright side is that it's so small and and you've been doing this for eight years already you know what i mean and nothing's ever come of it they that they felt 95 to 100 percent sure that i was gonna be fine you know what i mean so they wow. went ahead be, between the six of them made a decision to go ahead and clear me and said that I, 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 I'd, be, I'd be all right, you know what I mean? Wow. So I got all that paperwork just in case anybody right. wants to see it, you know what I mean? In, in the future, I, I, I right. All signed and dated, whatever you know what I mean? Damn, that's some scary shit, G. Yeah, it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty hectic, bro. It's long, the most it took me about a year and a half, done. two years to, <laughs> to get over that shit. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. I had no idea. Well, that fucking explains a lot. My yeah. God. You had yeah. no idea. Holy a lot of people shit. under a rock, dude. A lot of a lot of people well, actually you know, never really knew, you know, why I wasn't actively right. competing and actively fighting and and going out there and trying to get fights or why where where the heck was Mike yeah. Moreno? At, you know what I mean? Because I all of my former bro. teammates or still my boys were right. all out doing big things. You right. know what I mean? And I was and I was like, damn man, I'm missing out on my right this, on you your know what shot. Mean? I'm missing out on time, valuable time. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you can only fight for so long. Everybody right. knows that. 
Um, and, and Don't tell Randy Couture that. I finally got cleared. I finally seen J. Lou at, at uh, that Salinas, and I was telling him about, you know, how I was on, about to get, right, right at that yeah. time, was I about to get cleared or was yeah, I already like cleared? Yeah, you said you, you were going to the doctors and you were getting ready to get cleared. Then yeah. You seemed positive and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. And that's when I seen you over in Salinas. And yeah, he texted me. It was like a Bigfoot sighting. I was like, it what? It was, dude. I was like, this motherfucker fell off the face of the <laughs> earth. No doubt. Yeah. I was like, no, you didn't <laughs> see him. Come on, man. Really? <laughs> You saw Bruce Lee riding a dragon. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, and then he said that you were making your comeback this year, and then, like, we were super fired up and whatnot. I've been fired up to see you fight and whatnot because I, I don't think I've seen you fight since uh, War Gods. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Because you were going to fight at Gladiator Challenge, weren't you, in Tulare? Yes, I, I was. I was, but the opponent ended up falling out, and we couldn't come to an agreement with the last-minute opponent, so okay. we just – just left it left it left alone. Left it alone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I always wondered what happened with that deal. The longest weigh-ins ever. Yeah. Oh, my God. Those were the longest weigh-ins. You we were, were involved, Project. for like project. eight hours. I floated, I, project. Floated, I floated like three pounds that night. <laughs> Dude, it was <laughs> ridiculous. For real. I was, like, <laughs> I, was, I was waiting to weigh in, so Dude. I wasn't really eating. And then I was waiting around for oh another God. three hours, and I was like, F this. Yeah. Keep your opponent. I'm fucking right. ready to eat. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that shit was crazy. No doubt. No doubt. All right, my, well, my my boy Jose uh, Torado ended up uh, making his debut that night. And yeah, women, he did a real good job. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting uh, interesting experience for me. That was yeah. my first Gladiator Challenge card ever. That's what's up. The project was there. I was there. Co-main event, baby. That's it. It was tight. <laughs> Desoto, where you at? <laughs> Desoto, what are you doing right now? <laughs> Look at the project. Project's sitting up on Where are you at, DeSoto? I know, I know where DeSoto is. That's funny. But DeSoto was supposed to fight, allegedly, uh, William Brewster, but uh, your homeboy over at the other casino that will remain nameless on the show uh, didn't make it happen. Just it kind of fell through. And it's not Goodman. Oh, okay. That's all I'm saying. Well, not your true it'll homeboy. To, it'll be good to see uh, see those guys get in a cage, you know what I mean, and fight. So Sure. Hey, who else is on at. the card, bro? I, I mean, I, I I don't mean to sound naive because I'm actually on the card, but I just yeah. haven't fucking really checked <laughs> it out. Who even cares right? who else is on the card? You're I, on the card, I, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom doesn't care about anybody else well, on the card, so why uh, should you, yeah, Doc? That's true. That's true. That's how it is. We're getting getting ready to call our first caller here in a few minutes. And, okay. Uh, you won't be able Who's to Who's that going to be? be John Gunderson. Oh, it, now, allegedly he's mad. Is he mad? Well, I guess Gunderson... Read the press release. Yeah. And Dominique Robinson yeah. said he wasn't very impressed with yeah. Gunderson. And, he went, he went and, uh, and, George St. Pierre on his said, ass. he uh, oh. said that he needed to uh, I'm not very change impressed. his nickname. And, yeah, he did. And stuff like that. So, what, what, is it, what did he say his nickname should his be? His nickname is Quick Guns, but he said no. he needs to change it because he doesn't, to something he doesn't else. knock people out. He still yeah. gets them. He just said to something else, huh? <laughs> he didn't give him a name. Yeah, he just yeah. said to change to something else. Okay. So, Gunderson's got his chonies in a knot a little bit. Yeah, Gunderson's yeah. a little bit upset. So Gunderson, you we'll know. We'll get to hear what he's talking about. Yeah. You the headphones, bro. You didn't bring your magic headphones, so you're oh, not going to hear it, bro. That's all good. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll are gonna we figure that out for next week as well. Dude, I'm yeah. loving this setup. I don't know about you, Project, but I'm loving sitting inside the cage. I feel like a cage fighter, cool. but I'm not yeah. a cage fighter. I'm just you glad guys the are. door's not shut because then uh, well, I'm no. a little bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, I know. when you hear that click, uh, it's yeah. an automatic I don't. You guys don't want me to make my debut in this cage. That's all I'm uh-huh. saying. <laughs> we know you don't want none of hit boy. I don't want none of no boy. <laughs> the hell with hit boy. I don't want no boy. I don't even want some of these little boys up in here. These guys. Look at these little tough guys. This is pretty cool in here. I like. Uh, I like the little kids in here. They look like they're having a good time. It's good to see. Uh, you know, I don't know how much of this went on when I was younger. You know, we didn't. We didn't talk yeah. about this kind of stuff. We played yeah. soccer. You know, yeah. we play Little League There's baseball. There's a new generation of, of Pop Warner kind of thing, you so, know what I mean? So, I mean, I guess we got MMA mom over here instead of soccer mom, which, yeah. is, which is kind yeah. of cool, well, you know? wrestling moms, there's... there's yeah, there's wrestling moms, moms for sure. The day. For sure, the whole wrestling deal. Yeah, that makes sense. But, yeah. like, if you're a mom and you got your kid wrestling, do you really want your kid to go, like, get struck in the face? Like, wrestling... <laughs> wrestling's not violent. Uh-oh. Oh, no. The champ is here. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. The champ is here. Oh, it's not. Yeah, we're doing a we're doing a TV show. But well, we're not big like you. We're not like on real TV. We're just on cage radio. Yeah. We're talking yeah. to Zoila. It's not Bellator like it's not champ. like we're Bellator women's champions nah. like the Warrior Princess nah. Zoila Frausto. Yeah, she kicks ass. What? Uh-huh. 
What you, she said he cleaned why do up. I look clean? Because I took a shower. He's looking jerkings. pretty for TV. Yeah, he's looking pretty. Oh. He's looking you pretty. Know. All right. <laughs> She's got all kinds of gloves and whatnot. Look, at she got silver gloves. She didn't bring the belt with her, though. She, dude, she don't need to bring I the belt with her. I don't have either. I'm going to have to fight Zoila for her belt. Yeah. I had to put a <laughs> belt on just to keep my pants up. That's all I'm saying. She all might right. me in the face as I go get tried for the takedown. Yeah. All right, you ready to get in this first call? Yeah, let's get into this damn all thing. Right. Here, let's open this thing up here. Let's oh. test it out. Let's see if we have better luck let's this see here. Push it in there. Just push it. You know what to do. Hey, well, while they do that, I want to shout out. Yeah. Big shouts out to my boys, Liquid Nitro, my homie Bruce up north. Hooking, in, hooking it this up, doing great work water. for me. The, the craftsmen in P-Town, you already know. Knowledge, Stevie, BZ, Bobby, all the homies. Yarra. Big shouts out to Real Water. You know what I mean? Hooking it up, fat. You will Taking definitely taste boy, the Mike difference. Moreno. I think I'm getting amped up. And Dude, this water is ridiculous, bro. You, this water it is. is ridiculous. It's. I might need to drink it these kinda, on Sunday it, it nights because I'm it. so tired for the not so happy hour. Bro, it puts you in, a, in a great mood. I, I'm serious. It's, it's dude, that could awesome ruin my water. career if I'm in a great mood. What the, <laughs> what the hell is going to happen? It might just do that. No. Yeah. What happened? Is Gunderson not? Uh, you ready? You, yeah. All Come right. On. Here we go. Introduce him. Talk to the guy. Uh, you get to introduce. You're the you're the host. You're the host with the most. I just want to cut you right to it. Gunderson. I'm not in right now. Oh, snap. Oh. It's like that. Back Let's see my message, bro. How's try, try again. We'll, we'll I was going to we'll give him a no. second. Where's your... Uh, What's there, bro? You don't have an iPhone? What's wrong with you? He might be texting. You? Let's see here. It's calm again. You don't recognize my number. Oh. Yeah, see, he's trying to... Uh, damn. Give him a couple minutes. Damn, it's like that. Huh? If not, we're just going to have to go up, into Quick Dominique Guns? and give him 30 What's up, minutes. What's Guns? What's up? I'm going to change your name to Answer Your Phone. John, Answer Your Phone <laughs> Gunderson. There's your, there's your new fight name. How about that? Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Angel, you better have my back because Gunnarsson will whip my ass. That ain't even <laughs> like up for debate. That would suck. Dude, Alessio. Arlesio. I, I make sure to say it right. Arlesio. The dude was so cool. Now you got him on the uh, broadcast this time, huh? Yeah, it looks like he wanted to come out and do the, uh, He's cool, do the commentary and stuff like that, you know? He's a good guy. Pretty entertaining guy, uh, very knowledgeable, obviously a, a lot of fights. Yeah, but he's, um, he's fought all over. I'm actually looking forward to hear what he has to say on the broadcast and whatnot, so we'll have to check that out on the project's favorite MMA website, MMAJunkie.com. BloodyMayhem.com. Yeah, I don't say that anymore, remember? That was our New Year's resolution. I was just going to look at you. Not ours. Let's try this again. We're going to... Gunderson? If not, we'll just jump he's to... He's scared. We'll just jump he's scared. To. I know he's scared. I'm going to leave him a message, though. Oh. Oh. There it is. On air message. It's ringing. Let's see. Hey, what, are you turning the phone on? Hello. All right. We got we got uh, Gunderson on the phone. John, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's Mots with uh, Cage Radio. We're doing our show. You're live on the air with uh, our, our boy uh, Jeremy Lucow and uh, local fighter Mike Moreno. How's it going, my man? What up, homie? Going good. All right. Now, uh, tell us about this fight coming up. Now, uh, it, everything was all fine and dandy, I guess, until you read this press release of what the uh, Fallen Angel had to say. And now you're a little bit upset. Let's talk about that because he's going to be our next guest. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I respect the guy. He's, he's trying to do his thing. He's, he's a tough kid. Uh, he's definitely got some skills. But, uh, you know, I, have a, I guess I haven't found anybody that's kind of disrespected me in a long time. And I don't know if he meant it by disrespect or it's just his opinion. So, you know, it, it is what it is. But uh, in my opinion, I don't even think I should be fighting him on this show. I think I should be fighting Fabricio, you know, Camos, the other uh, UFC vet. But... You know, it is what it is. I took the fight, so, you know, I'm just go out there and do my thing and, and finish them and, and get him out and kind of show that, you know, he doesn't even belong in there with me. All right, so uh, obviously I'm assuming that you've seen some of his fights. Um, you're not, obviously, you're not too impressed with what he's got to bring in the cage, just like, I guess he's... No, no, that's, that's not true. I am impressed with what he's got. You know, okay. if, if, uh, you know, if I was a manager, and I think, when you know, when I'm done fighting, I, I'm going to manage guys and and still be in the sport. I and mean, he's kind of a guy that, that I would, uh, you know, look to, look to bring up. But I think he went around, he went about things the wrong way. 
I think he tried to fight too many guys with names, and, and he lost every single one of those guys instead of building himself and fighting more frequently. Um, you know, he's definitely got some skills, and he poses some problems for anybody. But I just don't think he's, he's got what it takes to be me. I think I, I, I just have too much experience for him, and, uh, you know, I think I'm a little too, too well-rounded for him. I can fight anywhere the fight goes, I can fight. So I, I don't think he can say that. Where do you th- where do you kind of see him taking the fight? Uh, well, you know, I see that he looks he thinks everybody wants to come in and take him down. So he flashes, you know, he does a lot of stand up and a lot of uh, takedown defense. He's, he's got pretty good takedown defense. He's pretty explosive standing up. Uh, he's strong. He's a big kid, and, and he wears he wears on people and he beats on them when they keep trying to take him down. Um, he really hasn't fought them that good of wrestlers or that, you know, that many good guys that can actually get him down. Uh, I mean, Chuck Kim's really old and, you know, Carlos Crater was the first time he got the 55, so he was kind of weak and, you know, I, I've gone with him. I mean, he's okay. Uh, Dave Kaplan, you know, I, I was beating on Dave Kaplan two weeks before that fight. I actually had a fight around that same time and I was training with Kaplan and, and putting a beating on him. I knew Dave was going to lose that fight. So uh, I was surprised you didn't get rid of Dave quicker in that fight. Because Dave just kind of stands right in front of you and acts like a punching bag. I mean, he's a tough kid, but he's not, not real good. Okay, I hear that. So, you know, that being said, Dominic trains hard. He trains his boxing, you can tell. He knows he's a well rounded fighter, but is he at that level? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I think he keeps rolling the dice and hope, hoping that he's going to, you know, he's going to finally beat somebody that he shouldn't be. You know, a lot of guys do that. A lot of guys keep fighting guys with, with more fights and bigger names, and then eventually they beat one and say, oh, look, I'm on that level. Well, then they go find out that they're not. Okay, now, uh, what do you do to an opponent that disrespects you? Do you just make short work of them, or is this somebody that, if you wanted to, you just keep around and beat on them for three rounds? You know, I, to be honest with you, I don't ever do that. Uh I get in there, and I, I get done with it as fast as I can. Okay. You know what I mean? It's, oh. uh, it's, it's strictly a, a sport for me, and I, I get in there, and I fight, and, you know, that's why I have a chance. I have opportunities when, I, when I'm mounting people or on top of them just to continue and, and put elbows in their face, but if the submission's right there, I'm going to take it quick. You know, I'm, I'm looking to get them out of there and make them say I give up and set his beat on them. And I'd rather just get him out of it, get him out of the fight. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight wherever the fight goes, and I'm gonna push the pace and get right in his face. Uh, but you know, I'm not letting anything he said or, or him pissing me off dictate how the fight, how I fight, because then I'll fight reckless, and I don't want to do that. I'm gonna fight, you know, smart and intelligent. Just everything he said that pissed me off is just making me train harder. When I got, when I gotta wake up at seven and run you know, a few miles, I have a reason to do it now. You know, kind of before the fight, when I took the fight, I was like, you know, it's, it's a it's a tough fight. The guy doesn't have a name. You know, I, I have everything to lose in this situation. You know, I was like, yeah, whatever, just still going to the gym. But as soon as I read that and, and heard what he said when I got to the gym, you know, it gave me some, just gave me a little bit of added motivation. That's all. Speaking of training and stuff, you kind of split, you split your time between two pretty high caliber camps can you talk a little bit about some of your training partners and and the camps that you work with <laughs> yeah you know when i uh when i made it to the ufc i kind of just strictly stuck with uh with tap out with team Tompkins, and we had a lot of guys over there but i felt like i, I went away from you know my style of fighting which is basically you know kind of getting in people's face mixing it up and if i can take them down and, and get them out of there so after the Eve Edwards fight, I had a long talk with uh, one of my training partners I still trained with, even though I was at top out with Evan Dunham. And I decided to go, uh, you know, split my time between the two. And, you know, this, is, this has been a pretty good uh, couple months of training because I've had Evan, Tyson, we got Gray. Um, we got Mac Danzig that comes up here. We got uh, a couple of UFC vets like Andy Wang, Steve Lopez, uh, Mike Pyle, Jay Haran. Just, you know, just a shitload of guys. And then, um, of course, when I'm over at Top Out, I had, uh, I got Sam Stout that comes in, trains for his fight. 
I was one of uh, Mark Hominick's main training partners for his fight coming up. Uh, and then, you know, I had Hordeski. I was one of his main training partners for Theron. So I've got a lot of guys, you know, and a lot of good lightweights. So I got every look at every every single, you know, style you can imagine. And I'm the only guy out of both those camps that, that transfers from tap out to extreme couture. Not one other guy does that, you know, because they kind of don't like that. And they understand with my situation that that's the only way that I can get my training. And plus, I'm friends with all those guys. Because I got kids, and so with the way my schedule is, I can only train two days of tap out and then three days at extreme couture because of the, you know, the way the time is for the, the pro training. Oh, okay. So it, it seemed to work out good, and, you know, I've got great training partners, and, it, you know, it's been going good. I mean, I got guys like Evan pushing me day in and day out. You know, you don't – you can't fall behind at all with these guys because these guys got, you know, huge fights coming up, and, you know, you got to be able to push them and get them ready for their fights. And then, you know, as soon as their fights are over, they, they do the same for you. And I try to stay active. So, you know, I've always got a fight coming up. All right, one last question for you. If Dominic Robinson was here right now, what would you tell him? Good luck. <laughs> That's it. That's it. All right, my man, I appreciate you taking time with us here tonight. I want to give you this opportunity to shout out anybody you want, my man. Yeah, I just want to thank, uh, of course, all my training partners at uh, FO Gym. Uh, I've actually been going over to Throwdown Training Center to train with some really good uh, kickboxers, too. On Saturday, so I want to thank those guys. Those guys have been, been putting a beat on me where uh, sometimes I can't even find my car after the end of the sparring session. Um, I want to thank... Uh, tap out. About it. All right, thank my man. Guys, too. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. All right, my man. We'll see you in action out here February 18th. Tachi Palace. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it, my man. Take care. Thanks again. All know. right, so that was badass. Yeah, that was super badass. Like I'm feeling. Sorry, like, you missed all that, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> like now next week because I told the project that last was week. Interesting conversation. Um, <laughs> it actually was. was I'll get good. the I'll get the headphones, but I'm thinking instead of the headphones, we need the sports thing. And I f that's what I was gonna do today, and I forgot when I was at the store. I was so jacked up trying to get the uh, sound fixed today, but. Uh, it's all good. It, it was a button that was on here that I pressed that I couldn't figure out. I was sending a sound effect to my board, so that's why I had, like, a crazy echo and shit. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out, dude. It was driving me nuts. So all the orange buttons are bad. Yeah. It happens. So I turned all the orange buttons off, the Giants buttons. Giants rule, <laughs> but the orange buttons suck on this thing. So we got rid of all the sound. Um, class is going on here in the background. You may hear it. Anthony Perales right there. Uh, Isaac De Jesus, Zoila's in the building. Uh, just you got little kids. You got the ladies in here. Looks like you got some big guys, some little guys. Uh, doesn't appear to be any old dudes up in here. I'm like the oldest dude up in here. So, um, do you get a lot of older dudes coming in here so training? Do you older get people. Older people in here training. Yeah, uh, we do. Like right, well, right now because it's a kids class uh, and uh, and the MMA class is okay. Some some youngsters, but there's a, there's a few old older, older okay. cats over there. Um, my class is more older older cats, not really too many youngsters. It, you're tr you're doing the what? Submission grappling. Okay, is that in here too? Yeah. Okay. That'll be right here where the kids are at. Okay. As soon as they're done. Okay. So does Zoila teach here too, or she just comes um, here and beats she just up people? Comes in here and beats people up. Okay, that's odd. <laughs> that would suck just to like <laughs> shut up here, be all cocky, and not she me, just kicks your ass. <laughs> oh no, I don't doubt that. <laughs> But, like, Zoila's no joke. She does, like, she does kick pretty hard for a chick. Dude, she kicks huh. so hard, I can't believe it. I love her kicks. I she, love her kicks. Here's the guy. <laughs> what a fag. What a fag. <laughs> oh my God. No, it's not because I was talking about a chick. So that's True. totally not gay, bro. Yeah, there you go. That's great. I get a... I get a pass on that one. Hey, you could tell Gunderson was a little bit perturbed. He's mad, huh? bro. Yeah. He's, a little yeah. He's mad, yeah. dude. Did he have a little aggression in dude, his voice? We asked, we asked yeah. him a question, and he just started going off, basically. What did he about say? What did he say? If, 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 uh, if Robinson was here right now, what would he say? What did good he say? Good luck. That's all he said. <laughs> good luck. He said good, good luck. luck. That's it. <laughs> good luck? That's yeah. it. He said good luck. So should we call Robinson now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, good. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah, Dominique's number. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I can call it. Nice. I love it. Uh, sorry you're not going to be able to hear this. No, it's all good. 
<laughs> I, I know it's gonna start like that. Man, Julio, the Dominican demon, dude. Oh, we That's who we need that, to get. We can't get that guy on the air. Yeah, we gotta call him. Be in big trouble. <laughs> Oh my god, that dude was disturbed. We should have him fight horror out at the. Hey, shh, shh, shh. I love his ringtone. Oh, he changed it, dude. Was it the uh, Power Rangers? No. Oh my yeah, the it Power was, Rangers. Uh, let me ask him. It wasn't Power Rangers before. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking Power Rangers, bro. Hello? Hey, what's up, people? What's up? It's right. Angel. Angel is in the building. Now, Project was just saying, be quiet because he loved your, like, ringtone, but then you changed it. What was your ringtone? What was the ringtone that you loved, Project? It was like some sci-fi thing, some sci-fi show. I, I can't thought it was. It was. Uh, I thought it was uh, Power Rangers. It, it was Power Rangers, then it was X-Files. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's up. All right. Obviously, we're joined by my man, the fallen angel, Dominic Robinson. His record is 15 4 and 1 project. Don't even start <laughs> tripping on that shit. Dude, Don't I'm start not, lipping I'm or not tripping. Sure dog. I'm just saying, the sheer dog getting a little mouthy with their deal and whatnot. But um, yeah, they always got stuff mixed up. By, by the way, what, what's up? What's up, Dom? It's, it's yeah, Mike. that's Mike Moreno right there. I can't he hear just you wanted right to sh- you he just wanted to shout you out. He can't hear you, but he definitely wanted to shout you out. We only got two headphones tonight. We're hella what's ghetto. Up, homie? But uh yeah, we're all excited to hear from you, man. So uh, we just had Gunderson on. Um, he's a little bit upset about what you had to say. Like, tell us what's up, my man. Why don't you respect his uh, anything you've seen about this guy? Well, you know, here's the, here's the first thing. It, ignorance is bliss. You know what I mean? I, I said, uh, oh, no, before I even... I'm, before you even say anything, did you get your phone the same yeah, place Chris Ron Kill got damn. his phone, man? Well, you gotta go you stand outside. Nothing. Your phone is chopping up. <laughs> your phone I don't is. Know, man. <laughs> his phone's chopping more than a butcher. Yeah, your phone is on. It's like Kalen's in the mix on his phone. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay, now holler at us. Uh, I, I, man, I'm in Oakland, man. We don't get no reception out here, no money, nothing, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I hear you, man. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, sure, dog. First of all, let's get this straight. Because uh, I read that article that they said, and they tried to do some good cop, bad cop type of shit. And, of course, the black man got to be the, like, the bad guy. They, they took everything I said and wrote it in the form, like, I'm, I like I just don't have respect. There's never been anybody that I've ever fought that I don't have respect for. And then they try to make it seem like he's a nice guy or some shit like that. But that ain't the context that I said it in. And then they put it in there. Everybody, everybody knows my, you know me. All my life, you tell somebody you know me, I've always got in trouble for telling the truth. I ain't got in trouble for telling lies like, like the average person. And, you know, I've seen interviews on there, the third dog, you know, Miguel Torres, Frank Trigg, Tito Ortiz, Josh Barnett, all these fucking people, Carlo Prater, with them saying they missed in fights. And they're like, oh, you know, you know, I just seen the top 10 Brazilian prospects to watch in 2011, and it's a guy on there that are like, oh, he had countless other fights not on record, you know, in Brazil. You talking and about they Sapo? Had a, they had an interview with Sapo, you yeah. know, that I used to train with, with Isaac, and they're talking about how he's missing 30 seconds fights. And then I'm missing 10, and let's get this straight. When I first started this sport, I had six of my other fights, including the one with Isaac on tape. Sure enough, had my web designer mail them in, and he never put them on record, and I never got them back. And, and I got and I got like five people that have confirmed that. But then they want to say on there like I'm a goddamn liar. You know what I mean? If, 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 I, if I'm a liar, why, why am I fighting Carlo Prater, who got all those fights? Why am I fighting Gunderson with all these fights? If I'm five and four, I'd be fighting like uh, Little Hulk Hogan or, 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 or one of those. Not that, and, and I'm going to say it right now, and I like to do, but I'm saying, for example, shouldn't I be fighting like David Boella or some motherfucker like that? You know, you think... I can't do both if you're going to give me these people like Prater and, and Gunderson and shit. 
you know, acknowledge what I've done. And if, and if you don't want to acknowledge what I've done, then give me Little Hulk Hogan or somebody or some or, 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 or another Kaplan or something. It can't be, it can't play both sides of the fence. And I'm tired of not getting the respect that I fucking deserve. Hell you yeah. Know? And then as far as, as far as Gunderson, you know, ignorance is a blissful thing. That motherfucker needs to learn how to read or something. I said it straight, straight up on there. I said I respect the dude. He's done everything I want to do. And, and I feel I'm better. Like, this, what did he want me to say? That, that he's a better wrestler, he's a better striker, and, and, and he's Ramon Deckers or something? No, that ain't the way shit is in my mind. You know, if he want to sit there and say all of his opponents are better than him, that's fine. To each their own. I ain't going to sit there and say nobody better than me. You know, the, 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 the fact of the matter is I've been doing this for five and a half years. And for five of those years, I've been training myself. And, 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 and you know what I mean? And I still go out there and I hang with people. They put a very specific that fight for a notice. My, you remember he went to like 900 different gyms to get ready for me. Right. You know what I mean? I took that fight to a notice, trained myself, and still went out there and gave a good fight. Traders, I had family issues, a broke rib. I still didn't fight out on the fans of the college. And I went five rounds with that dude. And that's training myself. So, you, you know you know what I mean? No. I feel like, we, uh, you know, if I could train myself and hang with these people, if I'm getting trained, I can hang with anybody. I was training at zero percent out of 100. And now I feel like I'm training at 30 or 40 percent out of 100. So I'm going to just be that much better until I get to where I'm training at 100 percent. You know what I mean? Like, and this guy talking about, Fighting to have a cool Facebook page. First of all, he needs to stop lying to everybody. That motherfucker ain't my friend in real life or on Facebook. You can't see my goddamn <laughs> page. And then he just, what is he crying about? He got a girl. What, is he crying because, you know what I mean? The, 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 the females love Angel. You know what I mean? They support him. I'm pretty. You know, he needs to stop hating and get on this tip or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> he can't see my page. And then he just. I, you know, he's talking about uh, he's mad. You know, like, am I supposed to care? He should be mad at his for so bullshit. You know, if you look at the Sherlock interview, he's saying, oh, Dominique's one of those guys you don't know about that's real stuff, and, and I'm good at this and that, that. And then in the shirt MMA Weekly interview, he's saying that I'm a nobody and I ain't done shit and everything. You know, he should watch what he say. If, I, if, I, if I'm a nobody that beats nobody, I beat his teammate. So indirectly calling his teammate a nobody. You know, so he, uh, he, just, tell, he, just, said he, he just said he was beating his teammate's ass. Yeah, huh? he just said he was beating Dave Kaplan's ass uh, weeks before he fought you. He talked all kinds of shit. You know we're going to do another interview this week after you hear this show. I already know that. So, so he thought, you know what I mean? To me, it ain't even a real thing. They got uh, 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 George Root about to fight Mark Hominick. They from the same team. If you if you real teammates, you wouldn't even be fighting your teammates. So the question is, how loyal is he to his team? How loyal is, he, is, is his team to him? You know what I mean? Right. He, he said he's talking shit about Dave Kaplan. I tell you like this. Can't no, if, if he takes the shot Dave Kaplan took, it's a rap. You know what I mean? I respect Dave Kaplan. Mox, you were there. You said it sounded like hit by a baseball yeah, bat. It did. I tell you like that. Gunderson ain't gonna take those heaters. You know what I mean? That's that Oakland Raiders heat 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 Ooh, like there. He could take that. I, I love that. <laughs> <out there. laughs> <out there. laughs> hey, come on, man. Hey, so you know, uh, and they contradict yourself. How you gonna say, Oh, he's tough, tough, he ain't done nothing. Okay, if I ain't done nothing and you had almost fifty points, why are you fighting me? You know what I mean? Look, you, what does that say about you? You a coward. You got 50-some fights. You came from UFC, from IFL. Why are you fighting the five and four, dude, if, if, if I'm some five and four, dude, that's some pump. That says a lot about you as a man. And then let's look at it from a psychological standpoint. At the end of this interview, he was like, oh, it's going to be fight of the night. Let's really look at what that's really saying. Fight of the night in the fight world are crazy-ass fights or wars, you know, like a Shogun uh, Nogueira type of fight. So he's indirectly telling the world that he's going to have a hard fight without telling the world he's going to have a hard fight. You know, you should watch what you say because 
people say things and if you listen to it, you see what they're really saying. You know, don't bullshit. Just say, hey, Angel, you know, I, you know, I, I, I think you're going to put the poop out on me and not let that be out. You know what I mean? Right, right. All right. Talk. You know, it, it's like it's like I, I, I respect them until I see them contradicting shit. I didn't down talk them. I said what any fighter say. You supposed to feel you the better fighter. And then he want to talk shit on me. Fuck him. Man. Fuck him. Fuck Pop out Vegas. Fuck the horse he rode in on. Fuck his teammates. All that shit. You know what I mean? Get down with this town business. Don't matter to me. So, uh, can can you kind of tell us how you think, how you how you feel like he might come in and try to fight you, and how you're going to counter that? Uh, well, I'm not gonna. I, well, I guess I will because I don't care. He's gonna he gonna come in, and he gonna stand up with me, and then he gonna try to shoot in, just like everybody else that I've ever fought. And that's gonna and, and that's gonna be that. I'm gonna step the take down, and he's gonna be forced to fill with me. And either I'm knocking him the fuck out, or he's knocking me the fuck out. And, and and I don't, you know, I don't plan on getting knocked out. I, I don't believe Sean Compton. After that fight, I had like 15 people come up to me and about how it sounded when I hit his teammate. I don't believe Sean Tompkins in his right mind to be telling this dude, hey, just stand there and play with him. I don't, if Sean Tompkins is telling him that, man, I just don't, I don't know what to say, man. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, a, that's all bad. Hey. And if he's angry, that means he, he, that means he gonna come directly to me. I'll be right there. <laughs> when do you see me go back with the right. fight? Right. You know what I mean? I'm looking and, forward and to I don't it. know how I don't know how he see, said I don't have respect for him. If in the fucking interview and say I have respect for him. How can I not? I acknowledge what he's done. He's he, he's done more than me. You know what I mean? I was I was watching him, you know, before before he was quick gun, he was just quick gun. He just had one gun, not even, not even plural. You know, <laughs> he was good. but fucking, you know what I mean? If he wants to put disrespect, then I'm confident. And hey, that's it. That's his issue. You know what I mean? I'll buy him some stuff this coming. You know? Ah, oh, that is classic. Well, Robinson, you know that. Uh I'm going to have to pick you anyway. You know, you're my boy. I don't care what anybody says. Dominic Robinson. I'm going to go out right now tonight and tell you Dominic Robinson is going to make short work of my boy. Quick guns. Quick guns. And then he said, mm-hmm. I don't know. He said, at the end of his interview, he said that he loves the sport, and I'm doing it for fun. You know what I mean? I went to a I, – I grew up harder than that dude. I went to a better school than that dude. I busted my ass to get – to get out, out, of, out of where I grew up from. You know what I mean? And I gave up all that for this sport. I, I You know, I, I fought a guy on a day's notice with a cracked fucking uh, owner. I fought another guy, a weight class and a half up, driving to Mexico myself. You know what I mean? With no training. I fought Prater with broke live while my grandma was in the hospital. This dude don't know what the fuck I've been through. And that's all training myself. So you need to ask yourself, has he been through the adversity that I've been through? In Las Vegas, probably at the strip club right now. You know, and, 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 he, and he's going to talk like he's been through more shit than me. You know, come on, man. All right, I got one last. So I, got, more shit than me. I got one last question for you before we got to let you go. If Gunderson was here right now, what would you say to him? I told him to kiss my black ass. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? That's, that's what I tell him. And, and, and that's why he want to get you. It ain't no respect in it no more. Um, you know what I mean? That that's the way awesome. it is. Well, Father Angel, I can't wait to see you February 18th in action versus Gunderson. I want to give you this opportunity, my man, to shout out anybody you want. Yeah, I want to... Uh, We'll start off thinking, you know, uh, my boy Rob Garcia and, uh, and Mike Regnier and Halford Caesar Gracie, where I, you know where I'm saying and that. Raina Lynn, my website designer. Dr. Lou, my boy Genghis Khan, the best highlight maker out there. Get at him. Go Juvo, my boy Mars. You know, uh, Rocco, JD, good, good guy. You know what I mean? Manteca, Bar. Larry, my boy Hector, Unbreakable Mouthpiece, Kobe. Tokyo Nutrition, my boy Sean, 12 Monkey Tattoos, you know, 
sexualabuse.com, you know what I mean, for all, for all the perverts, go there, my boy Duke, got to give him a shout out, of course, you, Mark, James, you know, Doc, they finally get him in there, he always, and Jeremy, I'm telling you, I'm have my goddamn record right. I ain't walking out till my goddamn record right. I'm going to sit backstage the whole goddamn time. They better get that fight on screen. I ain't walking out till it's right. I'm just going to put question marks from now on. No, bro. We're putting 15-4. That's what it is. 15-4 and 1. They better put it on, they better put it on there. And Earl, give Earl switch me to David Boella if I'm if my record ain't gonna be right. That's who I'm fighting that night. You know every and time somebody. they you know every time they send me the press release, I fix that shit, right? I know Jeremy needs to start fixing it. I know. He want to he want to he want to give me all I'll these send it back people to him. with like 800 fights. Then my record better be right, right. on that goddamn screen. I'm gonna send it back to him and tell him to correct that shit before he sends it back out. That well, uh, I sit back there sitting can at we get the a top good night of the now? Room, looking like a monk. Till they get that shit right. Straight up. All right, Dominic. And my boy Mike Moreno gonna put it down too, and James Shaney and Ivy putting it down today. All right. We on some goonish, some goonish Raider shit out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, Goon Squad. All right, it's going down February 18th. We appreciate you joining us, Fallen Angel. I'll holler at you this week. We'll get another interview, my man. You take Please care. Hey, one more thing. Yeah, talk you know, to I us. Thank, I want to thank you know Tree. He does. Everything, everything for me, man. You know, always have. And uh, my manager, Caroline Tobin, my son, Josiah, love you, you know. And my mom and grandma, thanks for raising me to be the knucklehead I am. All right, my man, appreciate it. Take care, Angel. All right, thanks. All right, bro, out. Wow. That was crazy, Mike. Wow. I, I wish I, I wish I could have heard that. What do you want? What? Oh, I think he got more time than the 15. I think, I think the Angel beat it. Yeah. He got 16 right. minutes. I think he did. We only booked 15 for him. He was mad, too. Oh, uh, yeah. That fight's going to be good. <clears throat> Fuck the dumb shit. You want to oh, change yeah. your fight of the night already, too? No, no. Cat. It's going to be a good fight. Okay. That's it should that. be. There'll oh, be some shit. exciting fights on that card. Dude, when has there ever been shitty fights on the card? Never. Next. Yeah, that's That's true. why we all go out to the Tachi Palace, and you should go out to the Tachi Palace. We'll Tickets start at 30? 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Nice. Yeah. For, for real name fighters, for real local fighters that you may not even have heard of, but you need to bring your ass out and support, period. Because these guys are out here every day, busting their ass. You guys show up for one night of fights. Like, these guys are working, like, year-round, getting beat up, faces beat up, wives, girlfriend, kids getting neglected because these guys are in here trying to – well, it's no, true. It's for real. It's true. It is. They're in here busting their ass, you know, like – this ain't like golf, bro, where it's like some country club experience. Like, this is fighting. Like, you get beat up. You get hurt. Like, that's real stuff. You get blood clots like my man right here. Yeah. I had no idea. Like, that's some scary shit. Speaking, speaking, speaking of having to do work, I actually got to go to work now. Okay. So, uh, um, well, that sucked. We should have. I'm going to thank Mr. Motzenberger for yeah, coming down. Absolutely. Mr. for hooking me up. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? I want to thank uh, Real Water and Liquid Nitro for hooking yeah. me up. Always sponsoring me. It's Fucking water is ridiculously awesome. easy to drink. It is you know good. I, mean? I want to shout out to my boys, the Mo Fucking Craftsmen. Check them out on YouTube. Their new their new album, Bringing Back the Essence. Okay. And um, you know a couple local artists. You know my 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 boys putting it down over there. You know the Kings. And um, I'm out. I got All right. thing. Well, All there right, you have guys. it, Mike Moreno. We'll see ya. February 18th. Tickets are only 30 bucks. And Mike yeah, Moreno. Yeah, come Mike on. Kick got Jesse a bunch Forbes' of them. ass. He's got a bunch of tickets, so make sure you uh, hit Mike Moreno up. Get your tickets from Mike Moreno. Support the local fighters. Shit, support the local gyms like Thrive Fitness right here that, that's putting it down. Yeah, like man. in the Madera area. If you're in the Madera area, I don't know where else you want to go train, but this is a pretty damn good spot. I mean, you got Zoila. I don't know, you know, any more higher caliber woman's fighter in the area. Is there one? No. Okay, I was just checking. No. I wish we had something like this in our area, man. This is nice. This is bad huge, dude. It is. It really is. So they got mm. all the bags over there on the other wall. Uh, you got some masks to roll on, obviously. A lot, of, a lot of people in this class. Like, I go to some gyms, and there's really not, like, a lot of people at the gym. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Team Ochoa doesn't do stuff like this, huh? They just, like, uh, beat the hell out of one another. Well, you guys see, are more like, the like, space we're, like, in right now. Yeah, that's, that's like, about. This would be, like, the Team Ochoa yeah. training center. It was crazy, dude. I can't believe how you guys go over there. They throw down, man. They I haven't been over there. Around. I haven't been over there in a little while, but I need to start going back over. Yeah, there. bro. Getting a little big. 
yeah, holler at me when you go over there. I want to go. I want to go check it out again because like I can't. Believe, there's like no padding on nothing, no pads on any of the people. Yeah, none of the people. So, so uh, what what, do you, what was your kind of assessment of the of the two fighters talking there? All I know is I think being able to call out and talk to fighters that aren't in our area makes the show 500 times better than it ever was. That's all I'm saying. It was a good idea by me, I think. I think it really was a good idea if you really thought it out, but you didn't. So. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. No, nah, so we got that worked out. It's awesome that you have all the phone numbers. But honestly, I could call Gunderson and Angel every day up until the fight and listen to those two guys talk and whatnot. Oh, look. Excuse me, Mr. Guys. Yeah. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. I, for, I forgot to say what's up to my boys uh, over at Painless Gardening and Hydroponics. Yeah. Just love to shout you guys out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Holler back at your boy. Yeah, Painless. Yeah. Holler at your boy here. I'd love to have you sponsor my show. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a perfect fit. But, um, dude, I'm not going to lie. This water does have me jacked up. Like, I seriously think, like, it's, Good stuff, dude. it's crank water or something, you gotta, bro. You got to take this home with you, dude, right here. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do one of these. But, like, low carb. It's good. I've never put anything just, low just, carb. Just try it. The red one's good, too. Okay. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Liquid nitra. But the water is smooth. Smooth. And I'm, I'm kind of cranked up. All right. You ready for our next call? Uh, I don't know. Who are we calling? We are going to call uh, Flyweight Challenger, Daryl Monaghan. I thought it was Juicer. What the hell is up with your commercial? What? It says Hooser, Hooser. He's fighting as well. I know. Is it Juicer or is it Hooser? We're not, we're not calling him. I understand that, but I want to know what homeboy's name I is. I don't know what his name is, dude. I'm not Brazilian. Yeah, but you guys hung out with him for a week. I thought it was Juicer. I don't know. I think it's like Hussier or something like that. Oh, my God. I'm so damn confused. Jamie Hara thinks it's fucked up. Come on, bro. That was bad timing on your part. Okay, now who are we calling? Daryl Montague. Oh, the Mongoose? Oh, you don't have his phone number on here? No, I don't think so. I might. I might. If you press and it says the Mongoose, then you know I did. I just haven't put it together yet. Let's do this. What the hell is his record, bro? Uh, eight and one? I don't know. I thought it was nine and one. Nine and one? I'm we'll have to ask him. Oh. Hello? What up? Hey, Mongus, it's Mott's Cage Radio live on the air with me and the project. How's it going, my man? Uh, good, man. How you guys? We're doing damn good. Now, uh, we were just debating what your record is. Are you nine and one? Eight and one? What's your record, my man? Uh, I'm sure Moggy goes 8-1, but it's truly 9-1. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so I'm on top of my game as usual. So he's missing yeah. fights too. Yeah. <laughs> he is definitely missing fights as well. All right, the Mongoose joins us. Very exciting fighter. Is this your first title shot ever, my man? Uh, this is actually going to be my third title fight I've had. Oh, snap. I fought twice for the right here, though. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, take us uh, take us through uh, where, where you're training at right now. Uh, I train at Millennia MMA. It's in Rancho, California. Uh, down here in the Inland Empire, close to Ontario, maybe like 45 minutes from LA. Okay, fantastic. Now, uh, obviously, you're squaring off for the scrap against the champ, Ulysses Useless Gomez, going down at 125 pounds. What do you know about your opponent, my man? I know he's tough. That's not. Yeah, I know he's got a lot of jiu-jitsu championships, a pancreation world title. He's got an MMA world title. Definitely going to be a good one. How do you kind of see you guys, uh, you and the Ulysses kind of matching up, you know what I mean? Um, he's, he's kind of a, a jiu-jitsu jiu player, and you just fought Luis, and you kind of beat Luis up on the feet a little bit. Is that kind of a similar game plan, or is, or is it going to be a little bit different this fight? Oh, you know what? Every fight I go in the same. I, I, if I could stand up and beat the guy standing, that's where I'm going to keep it. Um, he is very talented on the ground, but uh, I haven't showed it too much at Toshi, but so am I. I've done a lot of jiu-jitsu tournaments. I've won a lot of wrestling matches. Uh, wherever it goes, it's an MMA fight, man. I could think he's a jiu-jitsu player, but I've seen him throw, throw hands. He dropped speedy just as many times as I did, so, I mean... MMA fight. I don't try to think about what he's going to do. I just go out and do my thing. Okay. Now, so um, 
based on what you know about your opponent, you don't change your training at all? You don't try to uh, to work on your ground game versus your stand-up? Is there any special training that goes on when you face a guy like Ulysses Gomez? Uh, you know what? Every day I'm in the gym. I do my jiu-jitsu. I do my Muay Thai. I do my boxing. I do my wrestling. I do my strength training. It's, a, it's an MMA game. I train MMA every day. Uh, every day I'm trying to get better at all four aspects, you know? So just because I'm fighting Yuli doesn't mean okay. I'm not going to overextend in my jiu-jitsu. Every day I train hard enough and everything where I should be getting better at everything. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, because you want to be a more uh, well-rounded fighter. I totally understand that. totally makes sense. All right, uh, this one's going down at 125 pounds. What do you normally walk around at, my man? Uh, I never get over 140. Like right now, I'm about 133, 134, something around there. So 25 is a pretty easy cut for me. Okay, okay. It's, it's kind of uh, – that weight class is kind of different than a lot of weight classes. I kind of noticed that – that the guys at 125, they're they're a little bit more humbler, and it seems like you guys kind of all get along a little bit too. Talk to each other at the fights and stuff like that. Um, talk about some of the relationships you have with some of the other uh, lighter weight guys ar around, and uh, specifically at your gym too. Uh, you know, at our gym we have a lot of little guys that are very talented. I got Manny Tapia and Charlie Valencia to start with that I train with every day. But then as far as the competition. Uh, I don't know too many of the guys. I know Yuli decently. Every time I see him, we say, what's up? Hey, how's it going? But, you know what I mean? If, we're all cool guys. We're all humble guys. I mean, we all do. The, we all have the same hobbies, so I figure anyone who's fighting is probably... I never have to try to have no beef with anybody. Anybody who does is kind of dumb. Okay. We're so trying to get our division up, the, up ranked with the 35s and 45s. We're all just kind of like... We're hoping we're just a little group budding up to hopefully get up in the XFC and stuff like that. I think we're all kind of in the same spot where we just all want the attention, you know. We always want the 125 to have the attention. All right, so uh, it, it would just dis it, it would seem like it would be easier if I was mad at somebody to beat them up, but of course I'm not a fighter, so you don't need to be mad at somebody and dislike them in order to uh, to throw down. It's more this is just a sport to you. It's it's nothing nothing personal. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, nothing personal. I mean, I'll drink a beer with you only right after the fight. I don't care, man. This. We're going out there. I think Mike Tyson said it best. Put a little food in front of pigeons. They chill all day, right? Put a little food. They'll fight and kill each other for that food, right? We're both. We're all trying to just make money. We don't care. Kind of talk. We know it's a business. Kind of talk to us a little bit about the 25-pound division at Tachi, and, and uh, you know, you were one of the first guys that we signed. And, and, and talk about uh, you know the, the other guys in the division and where you see that division going. Uh, it was about a year ago when I was telling my manager, I was like, get me at Tachi, get me at Tachi. They have all the best 125-pounders. I need to compete against those guys. These are the guys I need to fight against. I mean, Tachi's doing a wonderful thing. They're bringing all the best 125-pounders in the world, and they're kind of saying, hey, look at these guys can fight too. Give them a chance. So I love Tachi, man. Awesome. All right, fantastic. Now, uh, we're debating what his name is, Juicier, Hoosier, De Silva. I saw him fight out there at the Tachi. I mean, honestly, I know you guys are all boys and whatnot, but I don't understand how that guy gets the number one ranking in the whole world versus any of you other guys. Is there anything magic about that guy that you could see in the future if you fought him that you'd need to work on? Do you think he's truly a number one in the world? You know what? He fought at Chudo. A lot of the Japanese before Tachi, Chudo was the only one that was really representing for the 125 pounders. So right. he he won the title over there. He got all this big recognition. He fought a couple, a lot of tough fights in Brazil, which of course that's everybody's Brazilians. You know, they, they started the sport. Of course, this guy's going to get all this attention. But when we step in the ring, if I, either me or Yuli, whoever it is, any of the best 125, even Ian, I've seen with Ian before. That guy's amazing. Any of us are capable of beating that guy. He's special. Okay, fantastic. I'm definitely looking forward to how that's all going to fold out. Because, I, I mean, I've been watching a bunch of MMA for years and years and years, and I think you guys, the, the lower weight classes are just much more exciting. You guys seem to have more gas tank. May not have the power, but, I mean, for, uh, for entertainment value, you guys are just uh, super-duper exciting. All right, there you have it. 
Go ahead, Prodigy. Who's that? No, uh, I was going to say, um, who, 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 what other 25 pounders would you like to see added to the division? And then what other exciting fights out there at 125 do you think that should be made? Not specifically at Tachi, but, but anywhere. What, what other fights would you like to see? Uh, I would like to see uh, a good fight I would love to see would be uh, John Dudson and Mamoru Yamaguchi, little Afro dude. I want to see some of the 125 strikers. We, we got a lot of the grapplers that are being attention. There's some of the 125 counters that are going to stand out, stand out there and bang. I'd like to see a couple of those guys fight each other. Sounds like you like you have inside information on top secret info that I'm already working on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Said, it sounds like you have top secret information on stuff that I'm already working on, right? Oh, really? <laughs> wow. You're putting that fight together? Yeah, careful what you ask for, apparently. You never know. You never know what might happen. Damn, he might just... No, but, uh, but Alexi Villa fell out. Uh, he, he, he opted to take a title fight in a different promotion, so uh, Dodson will be fighting in, in May, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to find him an opponent. But it looks like we might have some good oh. things Some good things coming together. Hey, that would be a great fight. I'll, I'll definitely want to watch that one. All right. And who, who specifically at 35s would you like to see drop down to 25s and maybe fight in their natural weight class? Um, uh, Mighty Mouse is the guy's name, I think. Um, yeah. The WC. Demetrius, Demetrius Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. That guy, uh, I've trained with Joseph Benavides quite a few times. Uh, he says he can, he can make the drop. Mm. I mean, that, that guy would be amazing at 25s. And then also the godfather of the little guys, man. My boy, Charlie. Charlie's the littlest guy. He's always been fighting. He's fought 155, 170. I want to see this guy get a shot at 125. He's one of the old, old, old dudes fighting from, like, since 99. I would love to see him fight at 25. Awesome, awesome. Well, Daryl, we appreciate you joining us here on uh, Cage Radio. I want to give you this opportunity, my man, to shout out anybody you want. Uh, Mom, Dad, love you guys. Uh, Millennium MMA, check it out. All right, Daryl Montague in action, fighting for the strap February 18th out at the Tachi Pass. Look forward to uh, seeing you back in action. Thanks for taking some time with us tonight, brother. All right, love you guys. All right, Brad, <laughs> out. Right. Dude, this show kicks major ass. I'm telling you, dude. It is so much better than having to talk to you all night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do much talking either. So thanks. No, but it's good. You asked some really, really good questions right there. I that, used to be a reporter, Mark. I know. Well, you still are. But, yeah. I mean, that was solid right there. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting, those guys at 25s, because they're trying to earn that respect and stuff. A lot of them, a they, lot are of them they, they really get along, though, too. Yeah. You, you'll see them. You'll see them uh, talking at the fights and stuff What's like that. Or, I don't know, man. They always want to go train together, even if they're going to fight each other. They're not and stuff. big enough to be filled with hate. <laughs> I guess not, dude. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different, you know? Yeah. No, I noticed that, too, that you're exactly right. Like, when you said that, I was like, man, they all are, like, very respectful. Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah. Yuli. Um, Dude, I don't know. You know, Yuli, Yuli told me something interesting at the fight, at the last fights we had when he broadcast and Daryl was there. He said Daryl had come up to him and, the, and they were chit-chatting a little bit. And he was like, he was like, yeah, man, when I heard that they signed uh, 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 Formiga to fight, the number one guy in the world, he was like, you know, I kind of felt bad because I felt like you should you should be fighting him for the title instead of fighting me for the title. Wow. That, that that was a, the, the, you know, that was their opportunity. But see, it's because they're both cut from the same cloth, man. They're like, those two guys are, are are considered two of the best United States 125ers, and they want to go out and prove that, that, they're, that they're a couple of the best in the world. So he, he can understand that, you know, uh, you know, he, you know, someone like Yuli wanting to fight, you know, a number one guy in the world and stuff. But, you know, we stuck, we stuck to, what, to our word. You know, that's something that we do at Tachi. We, we, we honor, uh, you know, we promised Daryl that fight before we had ever signed uh, – signed Formiga, so that's what we stuck to, you know what I mean? A lot of people are questioning us, saying, you know, Yuli should be fighting Formiga. He's the number one guy in the world. You know, he's already fought once in the promotion. How, how would you have him fight and not fight on the next show for a title? It's because, you know, we had we had that uh, that already locked in with Daryl, um, you know, when, when he fought Luis, if he beat Luis, and then he was going to get that opportunity, you know, and he earned it. You know, he came in here, he fought, he fought tough fights, you know what I mean? Won impressively. Yes. I mean, I mean, he made one guy quit with the need of the body. You know, I never seen anybody call timeout in MMA. In the middle of falling down. <laughs> he called timeout. Dude, he called timeout in the middle like, <laughs> oh, I'm hurt, bro. Time. <laughs> bro, that sucked. You know, time. Yeah. Time, bro. Yeah. I'm on the way to the ground. Stop. 
Yeah. Don't. Just, just get away from me. Don't yeah. even breathe on me. Yeah, dude, that was insane. You know, and then, uh, you know, he, he put on a real, real big performance. against. I'd never Lewis. heard of him, obviously, before you guys brought him out here. And, like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Like, that dude's, like, an exciting fighter. I do. I really like the Mongoose. He's yeah. a badass. You know, people have been talking about him for a while. He was up there on on a lot of uh, people's, like, who's to watch mm-hmm. list and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I watched a couple of his fights, and I was just like, man, we got to get this yeah. guy for sure, you know. I'm glad you did because yeah. that – very exciting fighter, and uh, uh, are, is he locked in for multiple fights after this? Fight? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, all of our twenty fivers usually we try to get for a few fights. You know what I mean? But if the UFC ever comes calling, that division opens up. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll open the gates, and those guys will be able to leave. Okay. I hear there's. Uh I hear there's a lot of uh, fighters out there and whatnot, like in the 125s, that I haven't heard of based on. There's really nowhere for them to fight. So, like, over, the, what, the next 10 years, are we going to see, like, a... You know, I think what's kind of what's kind of sad is there's a lot of guys that are at 35s and 45s right now okay. that may have, like, 10 and 10 records or and because things they like had that to fight. because they fought upper. Okay. And, and it's hard to market guys like that, you know. And then they're in the later stages of their careers, too. But I think now that... that Guys can go in, you know, these wrestlers that have been that have been wrestling at 125 or right. and stuff like that, and they can come in and say, I'm going to stay at my natural weight class. And, okay. you know, you know uh, I'm, this is where I'm going to fight. You know, right. I, I see someone like Abbott, you know, Ab, I know you're not a big fan of Abbott, no. but I see someone like him later, you know, in the next couple of fights dropping down to 25s when he's ready, ready to compete at the elite level. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of guys coming at 25s. You know, I, I think the, the pioneers of the, you know, like check out someone like John Dotson, you know. I don't know if you've ever seen that guy fight, but you you th- I'm going to. If you think, you think like some of the stuff that's been done, you know, the kicks off the fence and stuff right. like that are exciting. L- look at some of John okay. Dodson's fights. He was the first guy that was doing Superman punches off of the fence. Okay, you know what I mean. He he has a he has a kick where he does a backflip and kicks you in the face. And, wow. I, and, and, and uh, you know, I know that he does it in training and stuff. I don't okay, know. I'm I heard that he landed it in a fight before. But, awesome. you know, he's he's another guy that I think people are going to have a lot of fun watching. Oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, we got the Fallen Angels. Fallen Angels coming back, calling back. Uh, man. He's he trying to make a, re- he's not, a repeat. He's not done talking. You can only one <laughs> call per show, okay? We have a fighter limit on this show. <laughs> Yeah, that was loud as hell, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That shit happens all the time. Let me guess what the first thing is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, Angel, before you tell me all my thing, I'll burn the fucking DVD and send it to you, okay? <laughs> I'll burn the DVD and send that shit to you. That shit will be on its way. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I should have waited. I just sent him one out the other day. Yeah. He's, he's verbally killing me. But, anyway. All right, I think that's going to wrap this episode unless you got something else. We're going to have ticket giveaways coming up in the next couple of weeks once we get the yeah. uh, live stream uh, fixed, which should be ready for next week. Okay, awesome. And uh, I don't know, maybe we should try the uh, idea that I had, hooking that phone up and this phone up. Then we can have a two different phones yeah. going. Yeah, we could do some stuff like that. All right, fantastic. All right, Project, well, uh, this was a kick-ass episode. I'm looking forward to whatever the hell we got. Uh, we didn't get no food, though, bro. You promised no, me food. No, we didn't. I don't you know. We'll, have no to, well, I'm going to let you fight the owner. So well, we're going to go find out. Well, I'm fat. Tell me. I got to drive home hungry now. I think I'm fat, and that's why they didn't give me any food. I they got like, some real water, though. They put, Dude, real water kicks ass. I'm all geeked up. I may fight people up in here and whatnot. But uh, I'm going to drink this bad boy on the way home, this uh, liquid nitro. Uh, good stuff. All mm-hmm. right. All right. For everybody at the show, the project, Notch. Good night now. It's all or nothing. February 18th at Tachi Palace Fights in Lamore. 11 scheduled MMA bouts. Champion Leopoldo Zorreo versus David Loasso. A co-main event features Hussier De Silva and Ian McCall. A flyweight title fight with Ulysses Gomez and Daryl Montague. Plus local favorites Mike Marino, CJ Keith, and Lamore's own Andrew Martinez. Tickets as low as $30. Order online at TachiPalace.com. It's all or nothing. Thursday, February 18th at the Tachi Palace Hotel and Casino Lamore.